Hello, gentle people, and welcome to another Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. In today's tutorial, I will be creating a beach themed resin snack tray. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I'm Hazel. I am a self taught resin artist, and I enjoy sharing how I create the items that I sell in both my growing Etsy store and my Shopify store. I hope that both my new and returning subscribers uh, will be inspired by what they see and be inspired to create something beautiful. So as you can see here, I received an order in my Shopify store for a personalized ocean tray. The customer sent me an email asking that I personalize her tray with a Stevie Nicks quotation, I have my own life and I am stronger than you know. I, I, I like that. Okay, so here is that listing on my website. So after completing um, that order, I was in kind of a beach vibe mode and decided to create the beach themed resin tray that you are going to see. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I created it in four easy steps. Alrighty, so the materials that we need to make our snack tray are first of all, our silicon mold, uh, like so, like so. So we need our mold. So for our resin, we are using Craft Smart Part A casting and coating resin. And we also need the Part B, which is the hardener. I guess those will fit. We will need a large measuring bowl and let me just show you I think you can see inside there I'm going to take that out but when they talk working time I had mixed this had poured all but what's left in here doorbell rang it was my lawn care guy went to answer the door when I came back I picked this up and this is what I had a big old glob in the bottom, wasted resin. So that's our large measuring cup. We need our small measuring cup. We are going to be using three colors of mica powder, so we need three paper cups. Okay, and we need one little teeny, one little cup. Big stir stick for the large one. Four stir sticks for these, my nitro gloves, and then for the mica powders, I have this um, collection by All Starry, and it comes with um, five different colors of blue mica powder, and I had purchased this a year ago uh, for a uh, canvas I was doing. So we're going to take three colors out of here. We want a ocean blue. We want a aqua blue. And we want a. You see that? Okinawa blue. And basically, when we are creating water, basically, when we are creating ocean scenes, we want to go from dark to medium to light because when you're looking at the ocean it's lighter closest to the shore and it's darker further out. We need some sand and so this is literally my beach sand from Daytona Beach. I'm gonna stick that in there. Oh, let me open it so you can, oops, so you can see that this is... See? That's my beach sand.
and sometimes when you're walking on the beach the sand kind of has a little glint to it um, little fragments of um, sea glass and uh, shells so to give my sand a little bit of glimmer we're going to also add some extra fine gold glitter and because this is going inside the tray I need the shells to be flat and I don't have the package that these came in but we're going to be using these uh, colored abalone shells there and these plain um, or not plain but neutral abalone shells and this says mosaic accents seashell chips uh, natural so this came off of this bag but uh, that's what it is mosaic accents seashell chips and that's it so we're gonna clear this off and we're gonna get started Alrighty, so the first thing we want to do, this mold takes 400 milliliters of resin, but we're going to put shells around the rim uh, to get us started, and so we're only going to pour 100 milliliters. So again, my cups are always marked. In every tutorial before we mix our resin, I always uh, remind you to read the instructions that come with your particular brand. Craft Smart Resin requires us to do a two-part ratio, mixing one to one, and then they tell us that we need to be slowly, it says slowly mix for a minimum of five minutes. So that's what we're going to do. It, of course, is not necessary for you to watch me mix the resin. However, I watch uh, YouTube videos and I will see things that are beautiful and I have no idea how much resin was needed uh, to create that particular item and it always bothers me. And then I've had people when I've gone to craft show say, well, it takes so much time. You know, you have to mix all this resin. Well, if you watch my video and see that you really do have to mix the resin, then you're not discouraged. So, cup is marked. We need 100 milliliters. We have our Part B hardener. So that'll be 50 milliliters. Our Part A resin. 50 milliliters. Is there 50 left in here? So that's our one to one ratio 50 of the resin, 50 of the hardener. And then we know we have five minutes to mix. Okay, resin is mixed. This is just clear resin. Just double check and make sure my mold is clean. All right, so all we are going to do now is just pour this clear resin along the rim. And this is for our seashells. Okay, so we're going to get started. 
And so I like to just uh, put my shelves in a, spread them out a little bit so I can see what I'm working with. Uh, these uh, dyed shells are pink, purple, blue, and gold. So I'm going to use some of both or some of all of them and just make this a really vibrant, make this a really vibrant looking tray. And we're just going to randomly place I'm not a pink person per se, but we're going to make this really colorful. Now, um, I'm also going to be putting sand on here and I want this corner to be sort of beachy. And so we have a hundred. So we're gonna pour some resin, clear resin on this corner. And again, add some more shells. shells here and I love that these uh, are ir have it like an iridescent uh, finish to them some of these are absolutely gorgeous And I just realized as I was doing this that because this edge is as deep as it is, I can actually add some spiral. I can add some spiral shells. Again, it's funny, you do all of this and then you put your food on it and you can't see any of your decorations. But that's neither here nor there. Oops, those spilled. I'll have to clean those up in a little bit. Just dropping some more small shells in here. And it doesn't have to be a, a lot of shells. Again, just, just enough so you know you have a beach thing going on here. Alrighty, so we're gonna call that done. 
And we need to just um, hit this with the heat gun to pop any air bubbles that might be here. So again, uh, let this set for about an hour and then we'll come back and we'll put our sand on here. Let that set and then we'll come back and do our water. Okay, so the clear has set. Now we need to do our sand and I have marked 60 milliliters on here. So that will be 30 milliliters of the Part B hardener. milliliters of the Part A resin. And of course we know we do our five minute mix. So we are going to pour our resin into this cup. sand and I just add one. And what you're trying to do is <clears throat> make sure that all of it each grain I think that's the way they say it. each grain of sand is covered in resin of course as it sits the sand will soak in the resin so it's all going to be um, mixed anyway uh, but let's add some more When you're walking along the beach, uh, early morning sunrise and sunset in particular, uh, a lot of times the, the, the sand will have, oh, glints, little, look sparkly. Uh, there's more of that, whatever that is. And so to give our, glant, our sand some sparkle, we're going to be adding that extra fine gold glitter. And you do want the extra fine glitter because the extra fine is about the same size as the granules of sand. You don't want it big so that you know, notice that it's glitter. You want it to blend right in so it looks like a grain of sand. So again, just so that when you light hits your sand, it has a little bit of shimmer to it. We don't want bling. We don't want bling. We want shimmer. Okay, that's a little thinner than what I want, but we'll pour anyway. Oops. Let's, uh, 
Okay, so what we're going to do <clears throat> is just go right around the edge like we did before. So now I'm going to add some more sand to this because I want this thicker. I don't want it to necessarily be able to run. So we're just going to move all kinds of debris in here. So see, this is thicker. It'll still pour, but it'll hold its shape. And so what we're doing is just covering these shells to make our beach, basically. We're going to let this set and then we'll come back and do our water. So let's hit this with the heat gun. And we'll let this set. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll do our water. Our ocean blues. We are going to let this um, thicken like we did the um, shells, uh, like we did the clear and then we'll come back and we will mix and pour our ocean blue water. I came back in here to <clears throat> I came back in here to check on this and started moving stuff before I turned the camera on. So this this sand spread out to here and so then I just took my spat my silicone stir stick and I just started pulling it back and uh, trying to create sort of a, a curved, don't want that to be a straight line there, and just pulling some of this back. And just pushing some of that right back. You can see how that spread. Pushing it right back to the edge, and then I'm going to take a paper towel and go through and clean this up. Okay, so I push that back. So we're going to just take a paper towel. Put some alcohol on it, 91% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, I did not know there was a difference in alcohol until I started working with resin. The larger the number, the more alcohol there is. Uh, otherwise, it's water. And a lot of places don't use this 91% because it's pretty harsh, but for working with resin, it's perfect. So I'm just cleaning up where I moved. Um, I'm going to twist this because it's easier for me to rub towards me. And so again, where I scoop that, I'm just going to wipe And it doesn't matter if you leave a little bit of sand because, again, this is the ocean. And so you want it to be natural, but you also want it to be neat. So we're just wiping up some of that sand.
turn this back around. Okay, so then I will be back um, again to do the uh, water. I have done a bunch of other things like finish a set of uh, painting the pips on a set of dominoes. See my Jamaican dominoes? So while this was setting, I, ooh, ooh, God, ooh, that's bad. Uh, was painting the pips on these. This mold holds 400, holds 400 milliliters. So we poured 100 clear and then we did 60, so 160 from 400. Um, we need roughly 240 milliliters, so we're going to pour 250. Again, my cup has been marked. Okay, so we need 125 milliliters of Part B hardener. And 125 of part A resin. And we do a five minute mix. Okay, so what we need to do now, we had our three cups, three large cups, and so we need to divide this resin. Uh, we're not dividing it evenly. We need a little bit of, wee, a little bit of the dark, a little more of the middle, and a lot of the light. So we're going to pour the dark first. And again, we don't need a lot of that. More of that and all the rest. And a third of this, as you can see, is sand anyway. You won't be able to see the water on that beach corner. You will not be able to see that water. Right, so we're going to start with the dark, with the ocean blue. Okay, ocean blue. And then our aqua blue. Okay, so there's our aqua blue. And last but not least, our Okinawa blue. This is one of my favorite colors. All right, so here we go. Let's move this back over here. 
And so now we need to just pour these. And we're going to pour the dark one first up here in the corner. And then we're going to pour the middle one. And then we're going to pour my favorite. I think I am going to mix another 50 milliliters to top this off because I do want this up to the edge, up to the rim. with the heat gun. All right, and then we're going to just mingle these colors. Yeah, I'm going to mix some more resin. I want this filled to the rim. Okay, let's pour a little more. All right, so again, and of course, you know, this will not look this way on the other side. We always remind you of that, that what you're looking at here is not what you'll see when we unmold this and flip it over. But that's better. Alrighty, heat done to this. And then we'll cover it and let it cure overnight. And then this is always the part of working with resin that I like the most. 
and that is the unmolding because what this looks like on this side has almost no relation to what it looks like on the other side. So that's the back. And so let's see where to get this started. see when it turns white see how it's blue here and it's white here as it's turning white that means it's being released So, time for <clears throat> the big reveal, as it were. This is the back of our snack tray. And let's swing it around. That is the front. That's beautiful. Doesn't that look like water? And look at how crystal clear the shells are and this is why we put the shells in the resin first as opposed to putting the shells in and pouring the sand we put the shells in first that way they don't sink into the sand but how about that how about that I like that nice beach themed snack tray so what we need to do now is flip this over grab my Dremel and just go around and sand that edge down. And um, we'll be done. I do not put um, I do not put rubber bumps on the trays because again, you're usually holding this in your lap. You may be setting it on a table. Um, but yeah, we're not going to um, put rubber bumps on this we're just going to sand the edges and it will be done you know I love this Swiffer cloth for getting rid of the resin dust that I, I just that is beautiful sometimes I make things and I am so pleased with the way they turn out and again you can choose whatever brand resin you like but I want you to see how crystal clear this craft smart resin is. It gives you a really nice finish. All right. And if you and if you have watched any of my uh, <clears throat> if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that once you sand this edge, these edges turn white. And so we need to just get our little tiny paintbrush and our varnish and we just need to do this edge and so we use the deco art dura clear gloss varnish and i don't even need to put this in a container because that's how little <clears throat> that's 
how little we're going to use. I'm just going to put a little dab on the brush. So we'll let that dry. <clears throat> we'll let that dry. I can't flip it over because that edge is wet. Um, but we are done. I want to make sure that customers uh, understand that this is not a thin, flimsy tray, that this tray is solid. And so I have the scale here and we're gonna watch and see what it weighs. Okay, 1.49, so one and a half pounds. So this is a nice, sturdy tray. That's what I want you to know.